Hey guys, today I would like to discuss whether or not is the Dell XPS 15 9570 still worth it in 2021. Maybe you are in the market to buy a powerful creator laptop on the budget and the Dell XPS 15 for sure fits into this category. Then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. The reason why I decided to make this video about the Dell XPS 15 9570 in 2021 is that many of stock photo contributors and video creators are in the market for a powerful laptop on the budget. And with this computer you still have portability with enough power to handle your day-to-day -day tasks. However, it's not only about the processor frequency what makes this computer so special. So stay tuned to find out whether it's worth to save some extra money and go with this model instead of the newer and pricier 9500. The Dell XPS 15 9570 is for sure very powerful computer. However, at first it came to the market with many drawbacks. Some of them were resolved by software updates and some are still present until this day. This computer was released in 2018 and since then there was a lot of hype around it simply because its sleek minimalist look and the design similar to MacBook. At the beginning I had some mixed feelings about it as someone who is coming from Mac world. Few months later my switch from MacBook was completed by selling my MacBook Pro 15 inch. Now the XPS 15 have become a synonym for portability, performance and compatibility with all of my workflow apps such as Microsoft 365, OneDrive, Adobe Creative Cloud, DaVinci Resolve and so on. Don't get me wrong, it has its own flaws and I want to discuss also those. I bought this particular laptop myself and this video is not sponsored, so I'm giving you here my honest opinion about this computer. There are many aspects I like and also there are some I dislike about this machine. This Dell XPS 15 9570 comes with Intel i7 8th generation processor, 32GB of RAM, 1TB Samsung SSD, 4GB NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design, 15-inch IPS 4K touchscreen display and 97 watt hour battery. Starting with the design, the aluminium body still looks very polished and stylish. The laptop looks almost equally nice from the top as from the bottom. When you open the chassis, there is a sleek carbon surface surrounding the keyboard, which is extremely comfortable to rest your palms. The touchpad is ok, I would say. It supports all Windows 10 gestures like three fingers swipe down to show desktop and to bring back the application you are working with. Three fingers swipe up is to reveal task view and history and swipe to the sides to switch between opened windows. Swiping with four fingers switches between desktops. XPS 15 is equipped with very comfortable soft keyboard. As a person who types a lot, I like the feel and feedback of the keys. Even after a few hours of working, I feel almost no tiredness of my hands. This is also because of the soft and comfortable carbon palm rest, which has slightly curved edges for added comfort. Dell 9570 comes with a fingerprint reader implemented into a power button next to the keyboard. Logging in is fast and accurate even these days when I'm washing my hands very often. When it comes to physical dimensions, the XPS 15 9570's body is 9 inches deep, 14 inches wide and 0.43 inches tall. It weighs 4 pounds or 1.8 kilo. This model is equipped with excellent 4K IPS wide gamut touch display. This type of display is great for video or photography workflow. You can also watch latest movies or series with the best possible colors comparing with HDR smart TVs. I love the design with extremely thin bezels. In fact, when the display is turned off, it looks like the whole area is covered by the screen thanks to the glossy surface. Of course, it has anti-glare coating to avoid the reflections. Thanks to very high brightness of the screen, it's no problem to work outside during the day even on a glossy screen. Touchscreen functionality is another benefit of this laptop. However, I don't know any real-life scenarios where this feature could be very helpful. 
I used it only occasionally for quick access to the calculator functions. Or do you have other meaningful use of the touchscreen display? If so, let me know in the comments. I'm very interested. Speaking about audio, this laptop has decent speakers capable of making some noise in mid-sized room. It's not the cleanest and loudest out there, but most of the time I work with headphones, so that doesn't matter that much to me. The speakers are at the bottom of the computer facing down, which makes the sound quite muffled. Distortion kicks in at about 80% of the total volume. The sound quality is above average in this laptop category. Here's the sample of some cool music music from Artlist, which I use as my go-to music library for creating these videos. It was recorded using Zoom H5 recorder. In terms of connectivity, this laptop has pretty everything you would need for your creative work. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and the reason I'm talking about Wi-Fi is that the killer Wi-Fi card which came with this laptop out of the box is quite unusable. You have almost no signal from the Wi-Fi router which is located in another room. Instead of 30 megabits download, which my internet has, I usually measured 0.5 or 1 megabit of download speed. So I replaced the original Wi-Fi card with the Intel AX200 chip. Now it's night and day difference. Signal strength is great and also the connection reliability is pretty solid. Now speaking about the ports, it has Thunderbolt USB-C to standard USB-A third generation, headphone jack, full-size HDMI and SD card slot. This one is especially awesome. It's capable of charging through USB-C, however, for charging it uses Dell proprietary 130W adapter. When you try to power this machine from standard 100W USB-C charger, Windows tells you that slow charger was connected. This means that when you are, for example, rendering a video for a longer period of time, the laptop is discharging even when connected to the power. However, it's no problem for all those easy tasks like office work, watching videos and so on. Now let's move to the most important part and that is performance. Does this computer offer still enough horsepower for today's usual photo or video workflow? And my answer is yes. You have to keep in mind that this is a laptop. What means it doesn't have the same amount of power as the desktop PC of the same hardware configuration. However, it's still highly usable. Whether you are editing thousands of photos from events or weddings to editing 4K video timelines in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, it still works well for all those scenarios. If you are considering the computer only for photography workflow, this could be a way to go for you. It works absolutely like a charm for editing and managing photos in Adobe Lightroom. You get immediate response with Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator or InDesign if you are a publisher. The screen sharpness is absolutely gorgeous. Editing batches of photographs is fast and easy when you know proper shortcuts. I have no complaints from this point of view. Dell XPS 50 9570 is a very capable machine when it comes to video editing. When you use ProRes or DNX codecs, the playback and editing is very smooth for Full HD files and usable for 4K files. You can also use hardware acceleration in Premiere Pro with no issues with these codecs. However, you need to do encoding to DNX or ProRes first in case you don't have an external recorder which can record directly to these codecs. 
On the other hand, when you try to edit highly compressed MP4 or MOV files straight out of the DSLR or mirrorless camera, you will be facing very difficult workflow even in full HD. I find it sometimes tempting to use straight out of the camera footage for editing, that results in a very slow playback no matter which video editing software I use. Here is an example of 10 minutes 4K video export from Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve on a simple timeline with just color grading. I'm using Cineform codec on this example. And here we have an example of 10 minute complex timeline export in 4K with multiple audio tracks, multiple video layers, effects, captions and with color grading applied. I used here H.264 codec in 4K. However, Dell XPS 50 9570 has some limitations when it comes to thermal throttling. This basically means when your computer hits the upper thermal limit of the processor and its performance lowers down in order to cool a little bit. When the temperature is acceptable, it gives you full power again and this repeats until all those intensive tasks are finished. What happens is that the fans are blasting at full speed and the computer is even though not able to deliver full processing power through extended period of time. Nevertheless, this computer is still a beast. From this thermal point of view, it makes almost no sense to buy Dell XPS laptop with Intel i9 processor since it gives you almost no extra performance over the Intel i7 version. This was also confirmed by some scientific benchmarks you can find around the internet. Now let's discuss battery life. Original battery is rated at 95 watt hours and according to reviews and my own real life experience, the first the 4K model lasts about 4 to 5 hours of serious work. Two years later, my battery has left about 70% of its original capacity, what is still enough for about 2 hours of work or watching 4K HDR content. In case you want to have the ultimate mobility and still very capable and accurate IPS display, then the Full HD version would be better option for you. It's also a bit cheaper. In case you're finding a value in this video, consider to hit that like button right now and subscribe for more content like this. Remember, this channel is here for you at the first place. So let's sum up all of these findings. What I like about this computer is that it has comfortable keyboard with nice travel and carbon palm rest. It has high quality audio after some tweaks to the software. Performance is still relevant in 2021. It has beautiful UHD display capable of great color accuracy after proper calibration. Very good connectivity, USB-C, USB-A, SD card slot. You are allowed to add by yourself super fast SSD, add more RAM, change the crappy Wi-Fi card, or replace your battery. Since it has proprietary Dell charger, you are able to charge the system via USB-C. However, I don't recommend you to charge the system via USB-C when flashing BIOS to newer version. I tell you why in next point. Another huge advantage is Dell warranty, and especially next business day repair. I personally use this service once. During BIOS upgrade, my laptop laptop was connected to the USB-C power instead of standard AC adapter and after upgrade the laptop was no longer charging via USB-C. I called Dell support and after running some self-diagnostic tests the real serviceman came to my place on next day. He replaced the motherboard and everything worked fine since then. And of course, free of charge. I was impressed. So when upgrading BIOS or installing other updates, don't charge via USB-C. This Dell XPS 15 9570 has also some drawbacks. Fans are constantly running when connected to power other than the original Dell power adapter. On the original power adapter, the computer remains quiet on simple tasks. When connected to the Dell Thunderbolt dock TB16, fans are always running on the laptop and also on the Dell Thunderbolt dock. It's just the dock and it's making noise which is extremely annoying, especially when you work in quiet room. Unfortunately, I don't know about any other dock alternative which is able to properly charge the XPS 15 and also all other peripherals. Next bullet is about the Dell Thunderbolt dock TB16. 
When you disconnect the laptop from the dock, all hard drives connected to the dock start to spin. So the dock makes more noise when the laptop is not connected, which I can't understand. If you want to use Wi-Fi with your laptop, which I'm sure you want, you need to upgrade the Wi-Fi card to Intel AX200. Another bullet is about wide gamut UHD display. It is capable of displaying extremely vivid colors. This could be both a good and a bad thing. The good thing is you can enjoy 100% of Adobe RGB color space. The bad thing is that straight out of the box the display is unusable for professional photo or video editing thing since the colors are oversaturated. If you are a photographer, this display will make you a great service, there's no doubt. Keep in mind, you need to calibrate it first. Here is the example of uncalibrated and calibrated view of the same picture. I'm unable to show it very well here on the video. In real life, the difference in color is even more dramatic. Look how the skin tone is off on the right picture. It looks orangey. On the left, you can see calibrated view of the same image with correct skin tone. What can be shown here is that the display came out of the box with magenta tint. What was fixed by the calibration process? Last drawback is default out audio processing software, which distorts audio. When you connect headphones, it asks you whether you want to play the music through headphones. When you confirm, the audio in the headphones is heavily distorted by applying some sort of equalizer. This can be pretty annoying, especially when you use a pair of decent headphones. However, this could be easily fixed by uninstalling the Waves Max Audio Pro application. After uninstallation, everything works fine as expected. Now let's answer the question, who is this computer for and whether it's worth buying in 2021. If you are a photographer or a graphic designer processing a lot of digital files and need a lot of storage, one terabyte option is for sure still a very good option for you. If you are a video creator, the Dell XPS 15 9570 is still a very capable computer for your video workflow. In case you focus on social media and work mostly with 1080p footage, then this machine is able to handle this type of content very well. In case you work mostly from home connected to the power and want to make your experience in front of the screen more enjoyable by admiring that crisp and beautiful display, then the 4K version is the way to go for you. If you prefer to work remotely, then the Full HD IPS display is also a great choice. It gives you great color accuracy with even longer battery life for less money. So is it worth buying in 2021? Well, if you're on the budget and need a solid performance, high quality display, nice time ping experience, connectivity and portability in one package, then this machine is for sure good enough for you. And if you're able to find the Dell XPS 15 9570 used or new in discounted price, it could be a great value for your money. This video was quite long, but I wanted to give you very detailed insight in case you are considering to save some money and still need that creative work to be done. So that's it for today's video, hope you liked it. If you want to see more content like this, please hit that subscribe button right now and write down what you want to see next. I'll do my best to deliver that stuff to you. Big thank you to all of you who stayed with me until now and I wish you a successful creative week. Bye!